Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how I built this board. This board uses a Pintel deck unlike any deck we've ever used. It's 46 inches long and it features Abex massive 107 millimeter flywheels. It also uses two 63, 54, 190 kV motors from Flipsky, the Evolve trucks, a 10S 4P Samsung 30Q battery from M Boards and a dual Flipsky 6.6. .6. On top of that, it uses the new amazing VX1 remote from Flipsky with plenty of features including a backwards function, cruise control, and three speed modes. Without further ado, let's get into the video. We're going to start with a part rundown for the drive system, starting with the trucks, which are the Evolve Supercar trucks. These trucks are an excellent option as they have built in motor mount holders so they'll never come loose. And then moving on to the motor mounts, which are Skate Castle Evolve motor mounts, so they adapt the Evolve trucks to the 63 millimeter larger motors um, because Evolve uses 50 millimeter motors. And then you can bolt these onto the trucks using the bolts that are provided on the trucks. There's just three of them, and you just lock the screw through the holes on both of them and put the bolt on using a wrench. The wheels are the ABEC 107mm flywheels. These are massive wheels, extremely wide, they're nice and soft and will provide a great ride feel. The pulleys are 38 tooth ABEC style pulleys from Evolve Skateboards. The belts are 265mm HTD5 belts from Polybelt and the motor pulleys are 15 tooth motor pulleys from Build Kit Boards. The ABEC wheel pulley fits into the wheel's ABEC core with ease. All you have to do is provide pressure once the pegs on the wheel pulley are aligned with the core of the wheel. We will be using Red's bearings, which we got from Amazon. They're pretty standard skate bearings and they should work great for this project. The motors on this board are 63, 54, 190 kV motors from Flipsky. These motors have a maximum power output of 2,450 watts. They have four millimeter connectors and have a sensor. The motors can be mounted to the motor mounts using M4 bolts. Simply slide the motor into place and then screw the bolts through the motor plate and into the motor. Next, insert the keyway into the shaft of the motor. Make sure if you're buying a Flipsky motor to buy a keyway separately because they do not come with one. So that's an important thing to note. Once the keyway is inside the shaft of the motor, you can slide the motor pulley over the shaft of the motor and it should snap right into place. Once you've done this on both slides, you can then slide the belt over the axle and over the motor pulley. And once this is done, you can slide the wheel pulley over and then spin the wheel pulley to align the belt with the motor pulley until it's nice and flush. Then slide the wheel over the axle and snap it into the wheel pulley. Adjust the belt tension by sliding the motor as far back as possible and making sure it has a little give. Then tighten the bolts to the point of contact so that the motor can't move anymore. Once you've completed building the drivetrain, you can mount the trucks to the deck. We used a quarter inch riser pad so that the motors would not brush up against the back of the deck. We then did the exact same process to the front adding a quarter inch riser pad and bolting the front truck to the deck. After this, you can put the wheels on and tighten the wheels to the truck. Now moving on to the electronics that we used in this build, starting with the battery. The battery that we are using is a 10S 4P Samsung 30Q battery. It has 12,000 milliamp hours and has a massive range. We got the pack from M Boards. It has a built-in BMS and comes with a charger and a charge port. An important thing to note is that this pack is double stack, which means it's a little bit thicker than most standard packs, but otherwise it seems to be a great pack. 
This build will be using an anti-spark switch from Flipsky. It's the pro version and it has an XT60 on one side and 5.5s on the other side. The ESC we're using is a dual 6.6 .6 VESC from Flipsky. If you want, check out our review on one of our previous videos. The remote that we are using is the VX1 remote from Flipsky. This is a hot product at the moment as it has many cool features that we couldn't previously have in DIY boards, such as a reverse function, cruise control, and a battery monitor on the remote controller itself. First, connect the VESC to the power switch. Make sure that the out labeled side of the power switch is connected to the VESC and that the in labeled side is connected to the battery. You can then test to see if it works by pressing on the power switch and everything should light up. The enclosure is going to be the DIY E enclosure from Amazon. It's thick enough to house the double thickness battery and it's just long enough to fit both the battery and the VESC inside, although it is a snug fit. Before we can connect the remote receiver to the VESC, we need to cut off the plastic surrounding it and from there we can go into the wiring. So this odd looking connector plugs in with the white wire on the far left side and it just slides right into the slot. And from there, you can connect the two ports into the UART ports on the VESC. The one with more wires plugs into the master side and the one with fewer wires plugs into the slave side of the VESC. In order to seal the board more, we're gonna be using these conduit fittings and plugging them in to where the phase wires come out. So what we did was drill a hole the thickness of the conduit fitting into the enclosure and then we just screwed the fitting in, put the rubber seal on the inside, and then locked it into place with the lock screw that comes in. Unlike previous builds where we used a yoga mat, we are using a window sealer to seal the outside of the enclosure. You can buy it at your local hardware store like Home Depot. We then made a rectangular cutout for the percentage indicator by just using a drill and applying pressure in the direction we wanted it to cut. The percentage indicator then slid right into the hole. We connected the percentage indicator in parallel with the power switch, but we made sure to connect it after the power switch. That way, the percentage indicator would be off when the board was off and on when the power switch was turned on. We exposed the wires at a little piece using an X-Acto knife, and then we're able to solder the percentage indicator cables onto the exposed pieces of wire. The next step was to connect the phase wires from the VESC to the phase wires of the motors. We connected them across the conduit fitting and we also connected the sensor wire. We then mounted the battery into the enclosure using some Velcro strips. We placed one side of Velcro onto the inside of the enclosure, placed the other side on top of it, and then placed the battery so it would be stuck in the exact place that we wanted. We then created a hole for the charge port to slide into the exact diameter of the charge port and then it's locked on using the nut that is provided. We then did the exact same thing on the other side of the enclosure for the power switch. We also used Velcro to mount many of the other components inside of the enclosure. One of the things you may have noticed is that the white wire was not plugged in anywhere when I originally plugged the receiver into the VESC, and that's because this wire is plugged into the positive terminal of the battery so that the remote controller can display what the voltage is and therefore display the percentage. And so we just exposed the wire a little bit and did the exact same thing with the percentage indicator which was to solder the wire on. I know the wiring of the electronics may seem confusing, so I'll go over it again. The battery is plugged into the power switch, which is then plugged into the VESC, and the VESC is plugged into the motors. The receiver is then plugged into the two UART ports on the VESC. 
one of the finishing touches we added was some heat shrinkable braided cable around the phase wires of the motor just to clean it up a bit. We then mounted the enclosure to the deck by drilling a hole straight through the enclosure and the deck and then driving a bolt through both of them so that the screw goes through the top, through the enclosure, and then there's a bolt on the bottom. Another thing that we added to this board to make it just a bit better was this blue LED light strip that we got from Amazon. It comes with this sticky 3M stuff on the bottom, so we just stuck it to the bottom of the deck around the rim and then we connected the battery casing to the bottom. I'm sure there's a way to wire it to the battery using something else, but we decided not to do that. It provides an excellent look and it looks super sick. That's gonna be so cool. Once we did this, the board was officially done and this is what the finished project looked like. Now moving a little bit onto the specs, which is what everyone I think wants to hear. Starting with the top speed, which is an estimated 29 miles an hour, and then the range is an estimated 24 miles. In terms of the weight, the board weighs it at an astonishing 26 pounds, which is actually quite heavy for an e-skate. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate the support. Thanks again for watching and enjoy the rest of this writing footage and we'll see you in the next video.